is this is just the perfect way to start the cover two podcast for episode number 10 um this is are, are we live yeah we're live i'd like to be known by my new name which is bobcat goldthwaite i'm i'm tossing it up between bangle cat goldthwaite i'm thinking that one maybe is a bit better i think that both of them are terrible just like the team that we're going to be rebuilding today, the New York Giants. Hey, guys, how's everybody mouth. doing? Right. Watch your mouth. I mean, I, I, I am. I'm looking at the camera. I'm looking at OBS. I'm watching it currently. Um, got a pretty good beard going on. I think I'm doing a pretty good job of that. But, hey, guys, it's how's everybody perfect. doing? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> it, you know, it, looks, it looks better than it might otherwise. Yes, it, it does. Considering I am a mountain man when it comes to stuff like this, I think it's pretty good. I'm, uh, I've been confused with Andrew Luck a few too many times. Um, but hey guys, how's everybody doing? This is the Cover 2 Podcast, episode number 10. And as you can see, I already have my GM cap on. But today we have a very Sweet fun fine. show. Yeah, well, you, you, you reach a lot when it comes to this sort of stuff. <laughs> oh! Oh, yeah. oh, 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 I'm sure. Oh. I'm sure. Oh, Mr. Saquon Barkley, number one. Uh huh. Mr. Baker Mayfield going to the Redskins despite the fact that they traded for Alex Smith. Yeah, why don't we revisit the time that I posted that? You know. Yeah, exactly. The day that he got traded, you didn't even fix the script, man. Come on. I had already uploaded. You're supposed to. You're supposed before. to be an insider. You're supposed to be an insider, and you didn't even get the scoop. That's true. Some Kansas City guy, actually, Therese is a is a great guy, but, <laughs> um, but, regardless, um, <laughs> see everybody's on on the bandwagon. Um, this is uh, <laughs> this is the Cover Two podcast. Yeah. We're going to be discussing the Super Bowl. We're going to be discussing the Alex Smith trade and why the Washington Redskins are now a worse team for it in every single way. <laughs> And we are also going to be discussing how to rebuild the terrible, terrible New York Giants who need so much work that, God, it, it, I don't even think we'll be able to do it. Like, I, I, I think we're going to be... You need to, you need to calm down. <laughs> I'm pretty calm. <laughs> why, don't, why don't you leave the jokes to this guy and you can keep the statistics? Because, like... The Giants are actually not But that the bad. Giants are a joke. So that's why uh, you know what? Fine, because of yeah, that, you know, I'll leave it to the Giants. Two thousand eleven Super Bowl. Yeah, you know, those, 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 those were jokes. Those were jokes. They were very funny. Very funny. Yeah, I bet. I bet you were laughing. I, I, those I was, were around I, the I, years I was... you became a Patriots fan, right? <laughs> of course. Actually, I became a Patriots fan last year. At, last uh, year. At around the uh, at, at the start of overtime or so. Maybe a couple minutes into overtime, that's when I became a Patriots fan. Go Falcons! <laughs> yeah. Wait, hold on. Is well, that I, James White? Is that Vic Beasley? I mean, can't Falcons? you tell? This is a red shirt underneath my jersey. This is actually a Falcons it's, jersey. Uh, it says hashtag rise up. Yeah, exactly. But uh, it's uh, <laughs> this is gonna be a just a terrible, terrible show. You can already tell, everybody. Um, I feel like they get better every time we do them. I think I, the, like I think our banter improves. The chemistry grows, and you know the yeah. banter grows, and yeah. I feel like they're entertaining, and we get larger viewership for every episode that comes out. I feel like. Yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think uh, just like a quarterback wide receiver, we start with that continuity, and we start improving, and well, maybe one day we'll end up looking like uh, Nick Foles in the Super Bowl. You know, hopefully, you know that's the goal these days, right? Um, Fun fact, Nick Foles, Rob Gronkowski, college teammates. Um, I guess I didn't realize that. Yeah, I, I, it didn't really occur to me because I just, I don't think of Nick Foles ASU as... ASU or a, Arizona as a football school? I just don't really? think of Nick Foles as a quarterback, so it's kind of hard oh, to yeah. think of him. Close. I, well, no, I mean, it feels like he's been in the league a lot longer than Rob Gronkowski has. That's what I think has. as well. I mean, I don't know. Rob Gronkowski was drafted in what, 11? 2011? 2010. 2010. Yeah. Yeah. So Nick Foles, what was he? Two thousand nine? Hey, no, twenty twelve. Wow. No way. Right? Like he's only. He's got to be like ninety. No, he's twenty nine years old. That's crazy to me. I just. So he's still a feasible 
option at for a starter as a team. If yeah, you're I mean he's gonna he's gonna get paid like a Mike Glennon, and he's going to play like a Mike Glennon anywhere that's not Philadelphia. I mean that's kind of what's gonna happen. But in the meantime, he is with an excellent schemer in Doug Peterson. Yeah, he's and done a good job. I, I think we should start with the Super Bowl talk, and then we'll get into the Alex Smith trade, kind of go through our progressions here. Sure. It doesn't feel like the Super Bowl is almost here, but it's just a few days away. Yeah, I think it's because the Pro Bowl has become less and less impactful that <laughs> the week before, it's kind of like a blur outside of, you know, some good media stuff. But this doesn't... The aura around this Super Bowl doesn't feel the same, and I think it's because Nick Foles is the starting quarterback. That's not to sit, take anything away from Foles. Obviously, it's not his fault that Carson Wentz got injured. But it just doesn't have that feeling of, okay, this is a, you know what I mean? It doesn't feel it doesn't, like It doesn't, I don't is... know. I feel like maybe as I get older, and it, it sucks to say, but I feel like I have less and less, uh, less and less excitement for events. Like, I used to be big into watching the Olympics, and then the last time they came around, I'm like, yeah, I don't care at all. <laughs> the USA is just going to dominate, and you know that's pretty much what they do. They always get the you most medals. But I mean, even said. I'm a I'm a football super fan, if you will. You know, I mean, yeah, you have two teams. I could I could care less about the Super Bowl, honestly, which seems odd to say, but it is what it is. I mean, you should care because, God forbid, the Eagles win, you'll never be able to live I that I don't down. want the Eagles to win. Uh, let's let's say that right off the bat, because people are like, oh. Patriots and Eagles, the two vicious Giants rivals. The Patriots are not a rival of the Giants. They were a sure rival of Tom Coughlin. <laughs> <laughs> sure, the Giants have met the Patriots twice in the Super Bowl. The Giants have come out victorious on both occasions. They're not in the same division. They rarely ever play each other. Yep. It's not a rival. And, and, and the times that they did face each other in the Super Bowl, they had faced each other previously in that season which is a very common theme. The Giants actually faced the Patriots three times in 2007. Yeah, yeah I remember in week 17. They played uh, they in the lost. preseason. Yeah, by a, they they a, lost a, by a field goal in, yeah. in uh, I think it was in New England, wasn't it? I don't recall. It's a long time. It's over yeah. a decade ago. Yeah. I, I don't even know how I remembered it. it was week 17, to be yeah, honest. Yeah, it was week 17, and I actually picked the Giants to beat them in that Super Bowl because I was really not confident after watching that game. Um, as a Patriots fan, that hurts. But I just, I didn't have faith in them to handle that pass rush back then. And I was still a young buck when it came to being a football fan. But that was a, uh, that was a game that I was sweating out. And so when it ha when it ended, I was disappointed. But I wasn't as surprised as I was for 2011. That one hurt a lot, and I think it hurt a lot because Gronkowski was injured um, in the in the playoffs by Bernard Pollard the round prior. And he you was literally on one leg on Sunday. Yeah, he he, he, has he, to. he, he already got cleared, so he's, well, he's good. Yeah, he didn't he didn't commit, as far as I'm aware. No, he's, uh, he also, said he'll play. He's he's been saying that all week. Also, I uh, saw someone in the chat. I want to address really quickly. It says uh, you could care less about the Super Bowl because the Giants are never there. Yeah, they haven't made it twice and won in the past decade. So yeah, they've they've only won. Uh, two Super Bowls and been there three times in the past 20 years, you know? That's uh, not true. No, wait, uh, 86 and 90, yeah, 90. So What? They, huh? they, they lost to the Ravens in the Super Bowl Oh, I thought you were talking about their uh, victory. That was, yeah. No, I, I was saying the they've been to the th Super Bowl three times in the past 20 years, which That's correct, is, is more to say than most teams. And then in 90, if you bring it to 30, they yeah. won that one. And then yeah. 86, they won. Yeah. And so, I think that might be all of their appearances. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. it's, that's still better than a lot of teams. Uh, oh, and how? I mean, think, Talk about Browns, for uh, example. Yeah, I mean, think about even what the Patriots were before this dynasty. They had made two Super Bowls and gotten mollywopped in both of them, losing to the Bears in 85 and losing to the Packers in 97. I mean, those were two just bloodbaths, and they were a terrible franchise before Brady and Belichick joined together. And now they're spoiled in the fact that this is going to be Tom Brady's eighth Super Bowl appearance. That's ridiculous. He is he has been to to the Super Bowl in 50% of the seasons that he has started more than one game. That's just, <laughs> That's that's stupid. That's so stupid. <laughs> I it doesn't even make sense. I it, it's unprecedented in this sport. 
yeah, for really one team to be this good over any... I mean, you, you could say for seven or eight years, a team could be really good. I mean, Seattle's been good since 2012. This was their first real down year. This is six years. And they were more of a modern, expected dynasty. They made two Super Bowls. They won one. They lost one. They've been in a couple cha- conference championship games along the way. The Steelers, obviously the Steel Curtain. The 49ers. You're not going to see a lot of these types of teams... But to do it where this is their chance to win three in four years for the second time over the past 18 years is just ridiculous. And and the Eagles are in their way again, which is just a little odd. They beat a West team, you know, one of the the favorited West team. I believe they were fav- uh, the Seahawks were favored in 2014 as well. Then they beat a South team two years later. And now they're oh, facing I saw you tweet about this, yeah. Yeah, so there, there's some weird coincidences there. Um, obviously, it's not a one-to-one comparison, but this is still a this is still going to be a really good game in the sense that these are two excellent teams. Uh, the Eagles were one of my sleeper picks. They, they were my team to win the division coming into this season. Um, I expected Wentz to take a jump, but I thought that with the supporting cast that they would be pretty good. I didn't expect them to be as good as they were um, in terms of the supporting cast. I wasn't sure Aguilar would take the jump he did. but He played very well. Yeah. I mean, he is a very talented receiver. It's why you don't give up on guys, especially young, young players. It takes time to develop. Um, This is not a, you know, we've been spoiled by stars coming out of the gate, whether you want to consider... Odell Beckham Jr., for example. Odell Beckham, Mike Evans, um if you want to go Michael Thomas, even, I mean, to see these guys just to to see these guys just jump in and be stars. It's not typical for any position. I mean, you could have top five, top 10 guys, but we've had rookies over the past five years at a multitude of positions who as rookies were top 10 players. at Yeah. it's, It's been ridiculous. I was talking to somebody about this actually not too long ago. And it's just like, it's so strange to see rookies come in and quickly become some of the best of their position. You look at Khalil Mack. You look at Aaron Donald, of course. You look at Odell Beckham Jr. You look at maybe an Ezekiel Elliott. Of course, Marshawn Lattimore. Maybe even throw Tredavious White in there with the season that he had. These players come in, Jalen Ramsey, Alvin Kamara, Kareem Hunt even. You look at these players, and they're just putting up ridiculous numbers. They're being the best of their positions. Kareem Hunt led the league in rushing, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and, yes, he did. Which is I mean, I, he shouldn't. I, I, be I off wouldn't. I wouldn't anything. say that. I wouldn't say that any of the running backs are top five guys. But I think that also speaks to how good those top five running backs are. Yeah, but Joey Bosa is another one yeah, too. But they were so impactful early. I mean, it's it's unprecedented, and it spoils us. I mean, even even Mariota and Winston, they weren't top tier guys, but they were at least top fifteen guys, almost coming out of the gate. Andrew Luck, same thing. Russell Wilson, even in his first year, was that level of player. So to see guys, when you see a quarterback, Jared Goff, obviously his first season was not indicative to what he's going to be in his future. It's just you can't be that bad as someone who was that good in college, even if he had flaws. Carson Wentz, year one, not good. Year two, much better. Still has room to improve in a lot of his areas. His first half, I know people are going to be so mad because they don't get it. His first half really wasn't particularly great. He got better in the second half. Yeah, he cut uh, down on the injured. bad throws by yeah. a lot. Which that's the biggest thing for any quarterback is make better decisions and you will play better. Yeah. You don't have to have the strongest arm. You look at a guy like Alex Smith. Who, someone in my comments video was like, they were roasting me because Alex Smith apparently does not have a weak arm. It's absolutely ridiculous. Thing. Like, <laughs> he's like, we have weak arm, buddy. Uh, he's like, and then he gave me like BS stats about uh, about total touchdowns being 20 or more yards. I'm like, just look at how many uh, yards after the catch that is with a guy like Tyreek Hill. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 just look at his velocity. It's bottom I mean, of the he, league. Even Peyton Manning could throw 50 yards when he had a noodle. So, I mean, these are NFL caliber players. It's how fast the ball gets there. It's not how far it goes. And that's just, you know, if you have big open windows, you're not going to need the requisite arm strength to complete it. You might need it to turn it from a big gain into a touchdown. But if you can, you can still get it there. It's just not going to be, you know, a dime in the same sense. But regardless, 
I think when you look at someone like Aguilar, you see a player who took some time to develop. You see it more often now. I mean, Wentz and Aguilar are perfect examples. Players who struggled at plenty of times very early, year one, Aguilar a bit year two, but they took big steps each season to the point where now they're either serviceable or very good. I mean, it's just, it, it's what happens. That's that's the rookie curve. And speaking of rookies, Tremaine Edmonds, just as a complete side note, who I want to talk about at a later date, not on this episode, he will be the second youngest player drafted in NFL history. He will be 19 on draft day. No way. Born in May of 1998. As a, and he's a third year junior. He's, six just, five, he's just slightly older than me. 6'5", 250 at 19 <laughs> as a third I'm year 19. junior. As a third year junior. Apparently he skipped it's, a year of school. That's what I did. Yeah. So I'm like, he's super young. Yeah. So he's going to be the second youngest player ever. Um, the other one was Okoye, um, for a Moby the, Okoye. Yeah, from the Eagles. He was born in June of 1987, and he went in the 2007 draft. So he was a month younger than what Edmonds will be. So that's unbelievable. It really is unbelievable. So that's when, when I talk about a learning curve. If you have a guy who's 24 years old, his learning curve should be a little bit it's going to be a little bit steeper because he should be more prepared coming in. But if you have a guy who's 21, 22 at, at you know, in that range, you're going to see growth. It, it has to happen. Even if the guy never becomes good, he's going to improve because you have to, you're working with professionals. This is your full-time job. This is he's everything. an athletic freak. Yeah. So that's, that's, that's a step up on yeah. the rest of a lot Absolutely. of people. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, six, five, two fifty is going to run like a four, five, five Edmonds will. That's going to be yeah un- in that unreal. range yeah uh, just unreal <laughs> but, very very explosive player and yeah. people were like how how can you have Roquan Smith ranked above Tremaine Edmonds uh, when Edmonds is faster taller stronger it's the instincts yeah so I'm like uh, I mean like, I obviously love the athletic profile but it's yeah. not like Roquan Smith is a bad athlete he's just very slightly undersized if you're going to nitpick he compares very favorably to Patrick Willis and. He was a decent linebacker. Yeah, yeah, he was okay. You know, but let let's get back to the Super Bowl talk. We we covered the idea that guys improve and they get better. Um, okay, Super Bowl talk. Why don't you start with the matchup and what you think? We'll we'll spend about ten more minutes on this and then we'll jump into as some Alex Smith discussion. All right. So clearly. Everyone knows at this point, it's the Philadelphia Eagles and the New England Patriots meeting up for a clash for the ages in mini, mini I was going to say Minneapolis. We're going to say Minneapolis. I almost thought it was St. Paul for a second. I'm like, that's not correct. I just ruined my entire promo. Yep. Uh, but yeah, it's in Minneapolis, Minnesota, uh, playing at, what do they, they call their stadium? Something Bank Stadium, maybe? The U.S. Bank? U.S. might be. I, it, it's irrelevant. Anyway, um, I picked against the Eagles... In seemingly every possibility uh, that has arisen, I picked against them in the divisional. They came out on top. I picked against them in the conference championship. They came out on top. They're playing the Super Bowl, of course, against the New England, the New England Patriots, an absolute juggernaut of the sport over the past decade. Uh, and I will continue to pick against the Philadelphia Eagles. I, you know, there's not bias. I mean, there is because I hate the Eagles. I will <laughs> note that. I hate the Eagles with a passion. However, the Patriots, in my opinion, and I, this gets sound dumb, and it's against what I would usually go for, but I think on paper the Jaguars were a better team than the Patriots. Patriots find a way to win. Patriots always find a way to win, unless you're playing the New York football Giants, in which case it doesn't happen in the Super Bowl. But it's going to be no different come this Sunday. The New England Patriots are going to match up I think fairly well with the Eagles. Now, the Eagles have a great defense, but what beats a great defense is a quarterback like Tom Brady. And then when you have Nick Foles as the starting quarterback in the playoffs with you know, a decent team around him, you have kind of a gap at left tackle. Hal uh, Vitae is your starting left tackle filling in for Jason Peters. Maybe uh, if you have a really healthy uh, Trey Flowers going after him, you get some problems there, put some pressure 
on Nick Foles. He can't throw the ball as fast as he wanted to, as fast as he was able to against the Philadelphia Eagles. Actually, against the Minnesota Vikings. Yeah. So, I think this is a Patriots team that's going to find a way to win. And I have a, I have a, an inkling that you're going to pick the Philadelphia Eagles against your favorite team in the Super Bowl, which, I mean, I'm not going to spoil anything. I don't know. That's just speculation. But I just think the, the Patriots find a way to win. And even though the Eagles might be better on paper, I just don't think they're going to be able to win when it matters. And I know they have in the divisional and the conference championship. This is a different ball game. This is a Super Bowl. Tom Brady's been here. Time in, time out. Overcame a 28 to three deficit against the, you know, the high-powered Atlanta Falcons. Yeah. Uh, came back to win it in the first overtime Super Bowl in history. Tom Brady's did, been yeah. through every conceivable moment. Yeah, he has. So, I just I can't pick the Eagles here. I'm going final score, New England, 34, Philadelphia. 17. I know it's a high-scoring Ooh. affair. Philadelphia Eagles defense Ooh, is I'd quite good. That. I'd love that. <laughs> yeah, I bet you would. That's what I'm going with, though. 34-17. Patriots are going to find a way to put points on the board. Eagles have fast linebackers that can match up, but I just don't think it's going to be enough. Patriots are going to out-scheme them, out-perform, win the ball game. Boom! There's your prediction right there. Okay, so first things first. Um, I don't have the exact stat on me. But it was something along the lines of over the past, I think it was a decade, the Patriots have never lost in the postseason to a team that they didn't face that year prior. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, so it's like um, their losses came to the Ravens, to the Jets, to the Broncos, and to the Giants over the past decade. And I think they faced all of them in the season that they lost to them. So basically, uncommon opponents have not beaten them in a very long time in the postseason um so that's first things first. secondly how dare you say that the jaguars are a better team than the patriots uh, personnel wise they're significantly how better at every position except you? for quarterback it's how, a fact you look at their you? secondary they're better at every position uh you look at their linebacking core oh, better you mean at every on, position you mean on defense yeah you well, look at well, what, they're, what they're are the what do the patriots have that the jaguars don't well first um, off Brady, that's First it. off, wide receivers. And Gronk. And wide Gronk. receivers, offensive line, uh, tight end, and safeties. And safeties. And I'll take Deshaun Gibson and, and Barry Church over How dare like, Deron you? Hart. Does Devin McCourty even play anymore? Yes. He, he was, disappears. He was one of the best players in football this year. Nah, trash. And, pa- and Patrick Chung was too. I'm not a Patrick Chung guy. I know you're not, but that's probably because you watched him when he was on the Eagles and haven't watched him since. Boom! That's when he was on the Patriots the first time around. Yeah, yeah. it's been a while. It's been a while. But um, the Jaguars, first off, their front seven or their front four. Significantly better. Yes, but they were overrated in terms of their sack production because 29 of their sacks came in six games against the Titans, the Colts, and the Texans. They averaged 2.8 sacks per game against every other team throughout the other 13 games on the season. They averaged 5.6 against those three teams. They had two games with 10 sacks, one against the Colts, one against the Texans. That is not an elite pass rush. That is a very good pass rush. The Eagles have an elite pass rush because of... Brandon Graham might be the best defensive end in football. I know that sounds crazy. Um, He is so good. He is really good. He is really good. You know, it's it's so interesting because Jim Schwartz plays a very interesting scheme where it's basically we're going to do what we do best and you have to stop us. Mm. It's not, not trickery. It's not over-scheming. It's not a ton of adjustments. It's rotation on that defensive front. Timmy Jernigan, Fletcher Cox on the interior, two monsters in there. Chris Long, Fletcher Vinnie Cox is incredible. Oh yeah, Vinny Curry is really, really good as well. Yep, Vinny Curry, Brandon Graham, Chris Long, all of them rotating around, Derek getting pressure. Barnett. Yep, Barnett too. You have you have four quality pass rushers on the outside and multiple guys on the interior who can generate pressure as well. That is a legitimately elite defensive line. They have an elite offensive line in Philadelphia as well. Vitai is a weak spot, to absolutely say the least, but. They have talent in both areas. Um, wide receivers, I really like Aguilar. Love Alshon Jeffrey. Those two are going to be big. Torrey Smith is going to try to take the top off. 
But New England is a team that's going to give up yardage on the ground, and they're going to do their best to take away the pass. Um, you know, this is not a team. This this team has wide receivers, unlike Jacksonville, and at least a decently competent quarterback that I don't feel as comfortable with them saying we're going to stop the run and make you pass against us. I think it's going to be a flip of the script because the Eagles love those shot plays, and Nick Foles is actually at least capable of hitting those on a somewhat consistent basis. Now, Patriots offensive line against the Eagles defensive line is going to be the matchup. Um, New England has to play with tempo. The Eagles love to rotate, and they need to keep those guys locked on the field in unfavorable situations and wear them out because these are not guys who have been used to that at all this season. They are used to quick substitutions after one or two rushes, you know, keeping everybody fresh because they're an attacking front. That's what Schwartz does. It's what he did in, you know, everywhere he's been, and he's a brilliant defensive coordinator because he's so reliant on generating that pressure. But if they keep a tempo going, the Eagles are going to be in trouble. It's just what's going to happen. Bradham, Kendricks, two solid players. But I don't trust them in space against a James White, against a Deion Lewis, or a Rex Burkhead if you're throwing out of the backfield. Uh, I don't trust Jalen Mills at all. I think he is going to get roasted multiple times this week against Brandon Cooks. Um, Philip Dorsett, definitely a guy who we're going to see some of because of the double move potential. This is a very aggressive defense. They like to jump underneath those uh, underneath sluggos. They love to attack, and they're going. Their aggressiveness is going to hurt them. I also don't think Rodney McLeod or Malcolm Jenkins are fast enough to keep up with any of these guys. Even in you know, if you're playing cover two, we'll have. They're really going to have to anticipate those guys getting over there because if those corners bite. It's, it's going to be a foot race, and they're not winning that against Dorsett or Cooks. Um, Amendola is going to be a tough matchup. I see a lot of potential for the Eagles, but the, the main thing is going to be how does that interior line handle the pass rush from Philadelphia? Um, basically, how is Tooney and Andrews going to hold up against Fletcher Cox? Because Shaq Mason has been excellent this season. I mean, he has been an unsung hero on this team. Andrews is a very good player. I don't trust right tackle all that much, but Waddle or whomever is playing there has been good. They held Jacksonville to only nine pressures on 42 pass on 42 dropbacks, 21% minimal. Um, this is a team that has held up in pass protection as of late. And the the Eagles are very straightforward with their pass rush packages. So, um, give me a prediction. Prediction? Okay. I'm going to say New England 28, Philadelphia 17. I Are you think, saying that's four touchdowns? Yeah, I'm going to say four touchdowns. I think okay. that's I think that's what's going to happen. I, definitely not a defensive touchdown, mm -hmm. but I'm going to say that the uh, this is a game that I'm not going to say that the Patriots are going to win handily. I think they're going to score a touchdown late to seal it. I think the Eagles are going to need a stop. I think the Patriots are going to drive down the field with about seven minutes left and score a touchdown. They're going to play with a little bit of a lead. That That's my prediction. I hope, for my own sake, that this is not another heart, you know, a nail-biting, heart-pounding finish because after the Seattle and the Falcons Super Bowls and even 2011 and 2007, it's been a really long time. I mean, even... Even the other three, there really hasn't been a Super Bowl where I can safely exhale um, as a Patriots fan, which is not good for the cardiac uh, reports for most of New England. I just looked at my monitor. Are you in a Malcolm Mitchell jersey? I am. That I'm... held its value. Hey, he is going to be healthy next year, and he is going to be a monster. Fourth round pick. He was excellent as a rookie. Obviously, he was hurt this year. Um, I, I have high hopes for him, and even even so, I'm I'm pleased with it. It was worth it was worth the price of admission just to pick this up. It was between him and James White and the way that they rotate running backs. I didn't want to do that. Um, That's fair. I should That's be getting fair. a I should be getting a Danny Amendola jersey any day now though. That's gross. Hey. <laughs> even even if he leaves this year, he has been so important to that team for years. He's just, uh, he's just. I like, 
I like defensive players. I know you do I, that. That's why I, I don't a, that's really a, care for offense. That's why I have a Revis jersey. Uh, that seems a, not a, a, a red a Revis a, Patriots. A, a red Revis Patriots. You should have gone McCourty. I should have. I'm trying to think. I don't know who, who would a cool Dante Hightower. I think H- Hightower is a good one. Um, w- once he signs his extension, I'll be. <laughs> yeah. When, once they extend him, I, I might get Stephon Gilmore. I like Gilmore. in order of jerseys. I would get for the Patriots. Not that I would ever. I, I have a Brady, by the way. That it would be. I, I Brady's very mainstream. I'm not about that. It'd be Dante Hightower. It would be then Trey Flowers. Uh, and oh, then Derek give Rivers. You, give you another. Eh. He has to hasn't, prove himself first. Hasn't done but, enough yet. Yeah. Uh, and then I would probably go. I don't. I don't like any of the other options. Like, I, 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 I have Gronk a signed Army. Gronk jersey, by the way. Uh, yes, so, I've seen it. Yeah, so that's that's another one. Where's the Matthew Slater jersey? Oh man, I, I need that'd that be cane. a cool one. Yeah, How many need... times has he been a Pro Bowl special teamer? Not that he's oh. deserved to make it all the times, because he. Uh, you know, I think nine straight years. Yeah, um, I mean, but you start making it, you make it every time. I, I feel bad for Michael Thomas, the uh, the Dolphins' safety. Cause, Why? Because he was a le- he legitimately deserved it this year. I saw something like he was solid gunner. I, I saw something like he was uh, he played at the highest level of any special teamer in Pro Football Focus history this year, and Matthew Slater was around average. Which... Yeah, sounds like a Pro Bowler. Yeah, then I get him Pro Bowl. Is a popularity contest that doesn't well, even all, all take pro account. I think went to Slater too, which yeah. was the, which no, that's, was the that's issue. Ridiculous then. But then again, they have guys out of position on the all pro ballot, so let's not you know, <laughs> let, let's tough. not uh, let's not go too deep into that. But um, and actually, I don't think uh, Malcolm Malcolm Butler is a fit for the Browns anyway. But that's a whole separate issue. Uh, just reading from the chat, so. I have twenty eight seventeen Patriots win. You have thirty four seventeen Patriots win. Um, go Patriots! I'm giving a lot of points. I, I, Eagles defense is really good, but Patriots are a whole different animal. Yep, I, I'm. I'm hoping you know this would be Super Bowl number six for Brady. <laughs> that's not. That's not even fair. It's not. Even would fair. he be the most decorated? athlete in any of the big four major sports i know you think about michael jordan it's probably I, the most I, I think five already is the most decorated because football it's it's so much more of a team sport i think if you you can create dynasties in basketball much more easily than you can in other sports Fair. because it's yeah it's star power baseball no one cares you know that you each each individual has such a limited impact overall uh football quarterbacks huge impact so hard to maintain consistency that's i'd say he's probably the most decorated already um you know who doesn't get enough uh hype up for how decorated he is is kareem abdul jabbar he has as many rings as mj does he has more national titles in college more player of the years same amount of mvps and he never quit and never got you know I'm not even going to say it because I don't want to get this podcast in trouble. You talk about the uh, the reason Michael Jordan went to play baseball for a year. Yeah, his, the specu- his non-suspension suspension. Well, allegedly, no, no the, the speculated reason as to what happened to his father. Um, oh, yeah, oh, re- relating okay. relating to his non-suspension suspension. Um, Shall we move on? <laughs> let's move on. Okay, so Alex Smith got traded. If you guys were under a rock, um, Alex Smith got traded to the Washington Redskins and subsequently will be signing a four-year extension that comes with $70 million guaranteed through injury, um, which means he's going to be under contract for five years with the Redskins. He'll be going into his age 34 season this year. Um, they're effectively moving on from Kirk Cousins, and the Redskins sent a Alex twenty. Alex Smith. Yep, yeah, they're sending a 2018 third round pick and star nickel corner Kendall Fuller, who is only 22 years old, to the Kansas City Chiefs. <laughs> the highest rated slot corner in the league. Uh, the sixth but by basically overall every metric. Corner. By, by basically sixth overall yeah. corner ranked in the lead via PFF. Yeah. How I, do you? I, I think, how do you do uh, that? I think uh, Bleacher Report also had him as the number one slot corner as well. So everyone's on agreement. If you watch the guy play, you saw the talent. Um, he was a third-round pick. He dropped because of injury. 
didn't didn't have a combine yes. fully, didn't have a pro day fully, but um, he's he's 22 years old. A third he, rounder is already way too much to give up for Alex Smith, and they're like, yeah, take the best, the, you know, statistically the best slot corner in the NFL. There you go. Uh, do we mention he's not 30? He's not even 25. He's 22. He's 22 in his years second old. season. Yep, and this is and. More importantly, a lot of people believe that he has the opportunity to play outside as well. That he has oh, the, yeah. that he he has that, the tools Virginia to do Tech. that. Yeah, that he has the tools to play outside as well. So that is just Whew. So let's uh let's take a step further. Alex Smith is gonna be getting paid twenty two million dollars a year. Which is ridiculous. Kirk Cousins probably was gonna get paid about twenty seven a year. It's fair. He's five years younger. Four years younger. Let's go four years. Um, you haven't burned the bridge with him, with Alex Smith. But you're saving a minimal amount of money for a quarterback who is, in my opinion, a lateral move. And you're giving up a prospect that is going to be under control for four years and a star corner. For it a really doesn't move. make any sense. See, you could argue it's not even necessarily lateral um, because, and I'm going to argue in the fact that it's actually on a, a downward slope, if only slightly. You probably weren't going to retain Kirk Cousins anyway. Yeah. That's been pretty much a thing for a while now. But if you look just from purely the play of Kirk Cousins to an Alex Smith, and I know the numbers might not correlate to this, but... Kirk Cousins is a better quarterback than Alex Smith, and it's not even a question to me. It's not even a question. Alex Smith, check down machine, um, he, he, limits he playbooks. Aired it, he aired it out this year, though. Um, yeah. He's. I don't. And I, I hope you would back me up on this. He isn't close to the level that Kirk Cousins is playing at, and that's not to say Kirk Cousins is some kind of a stud. But Alex Smith is not a legitimate franchise quarterback, especially not at 34 years old. Uh, it just doesn't it doesn't make sense well, none of this trade does i'm going to go in the other direction and say that i think alex smith is a better quarterback than kirk cousins because i feel like kirk cousins does his best work up the seams he does his best work at man heavy teams and if you are using a zone defense he is clueless he is clueless beyond belief he has zero awareness he kneeled instead of spiking the football that's poor. That I'm is not a huge, poor. I'm not, you know, Kirk Cousins believer. I mean, or Kirk I, Cousins truther. I think I'm they're in saying. the same tier. I, I have Smith around 18. Kirk Cousins has infinitely more potential than Alex Smith, who has already reached his peak. That That's fair. I, Kirk I have, Cousins can continue yeah. to improve, hypothetically. Yeah, I have Cousins at around 22, and I have Smith at around 18 right now. That does, that does not factor in potential. So... Yeah, Cousins is a better player long term, but he's exactly. not a good quarterback per se. He, he's, he wouldn't he's an be, average. He wouldn't be that close to my top ten. He's an I average would probably quarterback. Have him, say 16, 17 about. Yeah, I'm not I, sure exactly. That might be slightly low, but I, I just, I don't see it. He's, he's just so. He'll probably get money from Denver, and then Denver will still suck. Yeah, it is. I I just I can't justify it because yeah he can be decently accurate. Um, it's just yeah he's made some really nice throws. It's just there's no consistency to his game. Your best and, bet. I mean, if you were gonna trade Kendall Fuller, you yeah. could have gotten probably a lot from other yeah. teams for that. Maybe you use that first round pick in Kendall Fuller to trade up with a team like the Browns, who could use a Kendall Fuller. Maybe at the number four slot. How does Kendall Fuller and a first sound? For the Browns to trade back only about 10 spots. You mean from four? Pick. From yeah. four to, yeah. From four, yeah. They would do that in a heartbeat. heartbeat. I think they would as well. By the way, it was reported that the Browns offered a second round pick to the Chiefs and they wanted to do what was right for Alex Smith and they let him decide where he wanted to go among the better, among the quality offers, which is really interesting. The Browns wanted Alex Smith, but they wanted him short term. They wanted him for like a two year deal. Yeah. And uh, the Redskins wanted him long term, so that, uh, I don't understand who's running that organization. I know they fired their GM. It's the owner. 
is it uh oh not it's dan Snyder. gilbert it's, it's Snyder. It, it, dan Snyder. yeah it's it's bad it's bad yeah dan Snyder. dan gilbert with the Cavs. yeah i mean he's bad too but yeah <laughs> i mean he doesn't know how, neither of them know how to manage an organization clearly so now let's just quickly ask you this alex smith on that roster are you in a better position today than you were with kirk cousins or a rookie now that Kendall Fuller's gone and you have one less pick and you're still you spending be. a lot of money. You, you, exactly. you, you have an aging Josh Norman. You gave away arguably, I'm going to, I'm going to say he's the best defensive player on their team. I mean, you could throw Ryan Kerrigan who's close to 30 now. Breland had a much, had so. a really good bounce back season, but he's a free agent, isn't he? Yeah. So. I mean, Zach Brown's a free agent as well. I mean, this is not a team that I'm feeling comfortable with. Moving forward, I think they have too many holes. They don't really have wide receivers right now. They have Jamison Crowder. Yeah, slot exclusive. And, and Josh Doxson. Outside exclusive. Uh, I love Doxson, but... Your red no, zone threat. That's not You enough. know, Ryan Grant's not terrible either. No, but he's... I want to uh, mention it. He's a free I don't agent as well. Yet. Oh, is he really? Yeah. And he's then a, Terrell Pryor, obviously, is not feasible. Yeah, and I well, he's, he's a free agent as well. Agent yeah. too. And Niles Paul's a free agent, and I mean Jordan Reed's coming back healthy, which is a positive. Ha! Jordan Reed's going to be healthy. Ha! <laughs> you'd, have, you'd have to assume. I know injury concerns in the past. That's, gonna... that's like assuming Tyler Eifert's going to be healthy. Just, just don't do it. Assume that he's going to miss time. Vernon Davis, at least, is a good backup. So, regardless, I don't like that. I don't like their offensive line outside of Sheriff. Their and offensive Trent. line is terrible. <laughs> Trent, Trent, and Sheriff are two good players. The rest. No. I mean, this is this is not a good team. This is not a good team. And I think today, or yesterday, they got worse. Oh, yeah. Significant. I mean, they have, some, they have some solid talent. I'm a big Preston uh, Smith guy. I think Matthew Ioannidis is severely underrated. Yeah. I, I was thinking that they might have considered trading him instead of Fuller. Because I just, I, couldn't have, well. I couldn't have imagined that they would have sent Kendall Fuller. People, game. I was streaming at the time. People were telling me uh, the rumor that Kendall Fuller. I'm like, no, the Redskins can't be that. <laughs> they can, they can't Kendall be Fuller. that. Dumb. Just, I'm just like, that's yeah. just a rumor, guys. Yeah, I, I was looking at their roster. I was like, I can't even imagine who they could be trading. They, they don't they, have any significant value with any. I mean, yeah. maybe Bashad Breland, but, but he's, he's a free agent. agent. So I mean, yeah, so I don't, you, I don't yeah, know. You can't trade a free agent. I and Trent know. Murphy's a free agent too. I mean, that that sure. could have been the guy. So it's like, <laughs> this is a team that you're. Whew. Oh yeah, Morgan Moses is pretty good. Morgan Moses is pretty good. But, I mean, they still have their issues on the interior. Um, yeah. I, and, I can't tell you who their center is. I, I don't know if it still is Corey Lichtenstegger. I thought, it was, I thought it was Bergstrom. But Tony Bergstrom could be. I know Spencer Long is also a free agent. I, I don't remember who played there, though. I, it wasn't that important to me. Yeah, it's um, insignificant. They, they were not a team that was really worth watching outside of studying Kirk Cousins and Josh Doxson on that offense. So, um you know, it's regardless. Chiefs, they got better in every single way. They got draft capital. They freed up seventeen million dollars. They got a nickel corner who could play outside because Terrence Mitchell is not very good. I mean, he's not bad, but he's not very good. At least you add another component to the Marcus Peters uh, saga. You also get back Eric Berry. You clear the path for Patty Mahomes. This team got better in every single way. And Andy Reid continues to fleece teams with those quarterbacks. Whether it be Kevin Cobb, whether it be Donovan McNabb, whether it be Alex Smith, he gets good value in return. I, I, I don't know. I, it doesn't make sense to me. I can't rationalize this trade from any angle. Uh, Chiefs, by a mile. Yeah. So, with that being said, we've covered that Kirk Cousins, uh, Quickly, in two words, where does he go? Two. Yeah, two words. Denver, New York. Okay. I'm going to say Denver Broncos. <laughs> okay. I'm giving two possible options. I didn't like the whole two-word thing. I know. I just... I, I, I was you wanted just... me to say a full team. I, no, no. I, I, work I, around. I wanted to see if he wanted to go multiple options or a full team name. I, I, think, I, I think Denver. I think Denver, Denver, too. That, But, quickly... To get him, they might have to get rid of either Tlaib, Demetri, uh, Demarius Thomas, or Emmanuel Sanders. 
<laughs> so this is another team that's like, oh, we're going to bring in Kirk Cousins. Let's just completely kill what makes us good. Demarius Thomas <clears throat> is not a feasible number one anymore by any stretch of the imagination. No, I would be not. okay with dumping his massive contract I would uh, if possible. I would too, but it's still, you need to replace that guy. If you're yeah, you, your best players, unfortunately, are, you know, they have the best years behind them. You look at Chris yeah. Harris, and Chris Harris is still awesome. He's, what, 29, 30, Aqib Tlaib, yeah. wrong side of 30. Darby. Emmanuel Sanders uh, getting Ro- Roby, Roby, not Darby. Yeah, Bradley Roby. Yeah. Uh, Demarius Thomas is getting older. Yeah. Um, it's just if, not, a, not a very promising team, unfortunately. If they, if they cut him, they'll clear 5 mil in cap. If they cut Tlaib, it'll be 11 they cut sanders it'll be five but uh thomas comes with a seven mil dead cap and sanders comes uh, with a five mil to leave only one mil it looks like to leave uh, yeah he, he seems looks like, like he's gonna be the odd man out but i i just don't like any of that and still no. they're only at right now 26 mil in cap space and they're going oh. to need right it's it's <laughs> and, and they still need to address so many things uh it's Oh, this is <laughs> this is going to be a tough year for the Denver Broncos. But you know what? If they sign Cousins and don't end up drafting Josh Allen, then uh, it looks like Elway will get out of his own way a little bit. Which, I mean, we, we went over that, right? He's drafted, I think, four or five players that are above average in like seven drafts. Right? We covered that on the show. I, I'm trying to think back on it, and I can't recall exactly what the number is. But it, so, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was very minimal. It was yeah. very minimal. No, I, yeah, for sure. Yeah. So, um, but, I mean, it just doesn't make any sense. And the Chiefs got exactly what they needed to better their team. They're super weak at the cornerback position. And now you look at the Chiefs, and maybe they address a uh, cornerback in the draft and now maybe they don't have to because yeah. you got Kendall Fuller and there are still weaknesses. I don't think Philip Gaines is solid. Um M- Mitchell I like. You, you, you signed yeah, Terrence Mitchell. You signed Darrell Revis to start. <laughs> he was making business decisions left and right. It was Yeah. Can you imagine why you, you can imagine why Derrick Henry killed them because Marcus Peters and Darrell Revis were only making business decisions when it was a run <laughs> when it was a run. Neither of them were were trying at all. That's just <laughs> <laughs> oh god if that's the one knock on marcus peters there's two it's that he's a little over aggressive which is good and bad and god he does not even bother to tackle it's it's terrible but let's rebuild the new york giants shall we we have a lot of work to do here yeah yeah a lot of work a lot of work i'm excited it is my favorite team and i guess if you guys are watching this as a video on youtube the video just started this is oh, from hi. the cover two podcast oh hello there i'm sure everyone's leaving awesome reviews about you down in the comments as we speak but this is from the cover two podcast uh with myself and moonlight swami all the links will be in the description we do it every thursday at 7 p.m eastern time on his yep. twitch come hang out all links are provided below and i guess this is a new segment we have going i don't know how long uh, it's going to run for. We're going to try to sweep through all the all the 32 teams, and this, I guess, yeah. will be the second. Yeah. Uh, well, we might not do 32, but we might. We do won't. The, uh, we're going to get the top 10. The top done. Yeah. We yeah, can't. We'll... We can't do 32 because you got to think if we're doing a weekly show yeah. and the draft is only in late April. It's <laughs> we'd, January, be rebuilt, no. we'd be rebuilding the Patriots It'd week one of the season. <laughs> after after the after so the we're going to get through as many as we feasibly can with yeah. whatever schedule we like. And, yes, you know, absolutely. it makes a lot of sense to do one of these right now. Yeah. So let's discuss the New York Giants as of right now. Um, they are the number two pick in the draft coming off of an abysmal, very uncharacteristic season. I'm going to drop the shtick. I think they're a pretty talented team. They just underperformed in every capacity, I think, because of, because of McAdoo, because of injuries, because of a wide variety of things going on. But they have talent in a lot of different places. Um they have $22 million in cap space as of right now, which is not a lot. Um, they could... Let, what? let me propose a question to you real quick. I don't mean to cut you off. Okay. But should we follow the same path for the draft? So, for example, if you didn't watch the Browns one, had Saquon Barkley going number one overall, is that still on the table? 
Are we um, keeping that uh, as I, is? I, I, I'd say he's on the table. I think we're going to say that this is a different perspective. Refresh? Okay. Yeah, we're going to refresh it. So the idea for me would be that this is, we're going to, I think for number two, we have to have two options now. Yep. Okay. Because in case someone goes, um, I think that's the way we should go about it just for the sake of speculation, because that's what we would be doing as a team. You know, we have our GM caps on. So uh, first things first, I'd say we cut uh, Brandon Marshall because we'll save five mil in cap. We'll have one mil in dead cap, but that's still five mil that we need. Um, We're at 22 right now. That'll put us at um, 27 or so, which he's really the only viable cut that we have. Unless, of course, we want to cut Odell, which I don't think we should yeah. do. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pass on that. Yeah. Um, outside of that, um, Zach Diossi is a one mil cap. Zach Diossi is a necessary player. He's Bobby a Hart. special teams oh. kid. Oh, B- Bobby, Bobby Hart, Hart can go. We can, we can clear two mil out of that. So what, what is a uh, what, let's go? I mean, you can't cut Eric Flowers. You Western Richburg, there'd be no need. Well, Justin yeah. Pugh, obviously no, it, not. It, it's it's just those two as of right now. What um, about uh what about John Jerry on the right side? John Jerry, I'm looking at the I'm looking to see if there's anyone worth. I think he's a free agent. Uh, okay. What about? Well, let's go over the free agents first. That way we can just. All right. Okay. Uh, Shane Vereen, Justin Pugh, Keenan Robinson, DJ Fluker, John Justin Pugh's Casillas. a free agent. Yeah. UFA. Um, really? Kerry Wynn, Weston Richburg, Geno Smith, Orleans Darqua, Ross Cockrell, John Greco, Mark Herslich, uh, Keem Ayers, Kelvin Shepard, Daryl Morris, Jay Bromley, Tavares King, uh, Deontay Skinner, Nate Berry, Devon Nat Kennard. Nat Burhey. Nat, Nat Burhey? Yes. Okay. Sorry, did I say, did I say nice, Nate? Real nice guy. You said did Nate. I, oh, sorry. Yes. His uh, name is uh, Nat Nail. Yeah, I see Nat. Um, Nat Nail. Yeah. Uh, Burhey. Devon Kennard. Ryan O'Malley, Robert Thomas, Brett Jones, Travis Rudolph, Curtis Grant, and John Halapio. The last Not few many guys, names there stand out. The last few say. guys They're are ERFAs, bad. so I mean oh, those oh. are. So the, uh-huh. those guys will be back. Um, yeah. Let's let's see John Jerry. I don't even see him on here. Um, John played a lot of right guard this yeah. past season, and DJ DJ Fluker is another guy. John Jerry. Now it's a two point five. And a 1.6 uh, dead cap. That's really not Probably worth not it. Probably not worth it. Yeah. For, for only 900K. Um, yeah. DRC would be a tough cut, but 6.5 cap, two, 2 mil in dead money. Might be worth I it. Would n- I would not be ready to cut Dominic Rogers Camardi. I wouldn't either. Oh, Ray Ray Armstrong is another 1.2. So let's say from Ray Ray Armstrong, from Brandon Marshall, and from Zach Diossi, we are clearing. Um, a good amount of money right there. Oh, and, and Bobby Hart. So Bobby Hart. let's see. Uh, 1.2, that's 2.2. Make that uh, 4. 4. 1, and then you add another 5. So about 9.5 mil with about 1.5 mil uh, dead money. I think that's pretty good. Necessary evil, yeah. yeah. So 9 mil created. So we're up to 31 mil in cap space right now. I believe that's what we're at. Um, okay. That, that puts us, yeah, we are, we currently have 22 mil. So that puts us at 31 mil in cap as of right now. Um, we have to look at the offensive line. I think that's the biggest one because now we have those free agents that are, we have Pugh and Richburg both as free agents. Justin um, Pugh and Western Richburg both need to be re-signed. Yeah, I think they are the only competent pieces on your offensive line. Justin Pugh more so than Western Richburg, who's uh, been in decline, unfortunately, but he's still young. He's still solid. Uh, he just has nobody around him. Yeah, that, that's another well. big yeah. part of it. Um, so first thing I want to mention is John Greco's a really talented player. He's older, but I would bring him back if possible. He didn't play at all for the Giants, uh, if I recall. Which is, I, I think it's criminally underrated. I thought he was really good on the Browns, which what, when he got cut, I was very disappointed. Um, I thought he could be a guy who could play right tackle for them, um, if need be. And that's an area of weakness for the Browns and for the uh, and for the Giants. So He's definitely a decent player. And with the Giants' uh, issues, we'll say, on the right side of that offensive line, right guard and right tackle, 
John Gre- I would have loved to see John Greco in there. I would love to see anybody else not named John Jerry, not named DJ Fluker, not named Bobby Hart. Oh yeah, keep was, in mind uh, Gettleman's tendencies. Uh, well, we're not we're not going to keep in mind Gettleman's tendencies because we're acting it's as we are the we, we are the general managers for this. So we're rebuilding them as we are the front office. But um, so what, what would you say, uh, Pew Richburg? And are we going to bring back? Greco on a minimal deal or no? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say probably not because okay. it, it's just not worth it to me. Okay. And uh, I just feel like if there's a reason that teams aren't playing him with the Browns' offensive line worries on the right side at right tackle exclusively. Yeah. I, I know right guard is decent. Um, there's a reason John Greco was cut. There's a reason the trash Giants' offensive line didn't play him. And yeah. I'm not sure yeah. if it was injuries. I'm not gonna yeah. deal with it. John Greco. I, I, I would say that the reason that he didn't play at uh, in Cleveland was because they wanted to give uh, Sean Coleman reps, which I think would be the most likely piece. But um, yeah, that's uh, that, that's just my point. I, I think you're right though. If he didn't play much in New York, he's just not a fit uh, for us. So Pew and Richburg, um, that offensive line market is brutal. Uh, I know Andrew Norwell is a guy that's going to be there. Yeah. But, I mean, but just from the perspective of, of money that we're going to have to dish out for them. And But there's no reason to sign Andrew Norwell, who's been a left guard his entire career, when Justin Pugh is a more than capable left yeah. guard that we're bringing back. It just doesn't really make sense to sign him. So offensive line something that you're likely going to have to address through the draft. And I think – Right guard is a position that Eric Flowers would be able to play, maybe not at a super high level, but his strengths lead to him being an offensive guard, not a tackle. He doesn't have the quickness. He doesn't have the technique. He cannot play tackle, can't do it on yeah. the right side, can't do it on the left side. Yeah, Stop and he doesn't have a good guard. attitude either. Which He's the worst. I, I would, but I he's would not as bad he, as Eli Apple. That's true. I, I would cut him if it didn't mean, you know, I, I would cut him anyway, honestly. Uh, but the, the 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 dead cap is not worth it. Um, I would I would cut Eli Apple almost certainly. Um, even given the cap penalty, which would be yeah. pretty large. Um, but I I still would consider that. I don't think we're going to for our purposes here. Yeah. But it's something that I would like to do purely because of how poorly he plays. But more so than that, his awful attitude. Yeah. One hundred percent of the time, pushing coaches. Getting yeah. into fights with teammates consistently, not wanting to win, being a mm, being a clown on Twitter. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, horrific. So let's uh let's talk about the resignings. Sure. So we're we're done ranting about the the terribleness that we ha- currently have, the toxicity on the roster. Um what are we offering Pew? He's I think he's worth probably six a year. Six? That would put him... seven. I'd say seven is what Josh Sitton got. Eight is what Upati got. Let let me look at both guards instead of just left guard. Um, This is tough. Um, We got to keep in mind that Pew is... He's a comparable left guard, but he's by no means a pro bowler. Um, You know, dude, injuries hold him back a lot. Unfortunately, but I don't think you can rationalize paying him eight. I think six or seven is fair. I think he'll get more than that on the open market. That's honestly. probably true. That's so probably I, true. I, I don't think we can offer him that low. Otherwise, he'll leave. Um, obviously, we could franchise tag him, but I'd rather not. Yeah, no, I'm out on that. Um, I'd say we should probably offer him eight. That's what Brooks, Joe. Eight Cole, over what? Eight over four. Eight over four. Yeah, 32. I think that probably be best. That's what Warford. That's what uh, uh, Joe yeah. That's what Brooks. That's Joe what Potty really? He, one year, eight mil. Yeah, that's egregious. All right, I'm I'm down for that then. Okay, four so, years, eight mil, with his injury concerns. I think that's a, a fair know, contract for both parties. Four for thirty-two. Um, how much guaranteed here? I'd say we offer Maybe just fifteen flat. Sixteen, uh, half of it. Okay, fifty. We'll go 16, 15 and a half, maybe. Yeah, okay, yeah. Okay. Um, I think that's probably what we need to give him. Otherwise, I think he'll leave. Um, 
value on the market is just it's too high. Richburg, that's on the other hand, I that's a tough one. Um, I want him back, but there are so many injury concerns there with concussions, with uh, lower body stuff as well. Yeah. Uh, I'd be comfortable <sighs> five over three. I know he's a younger player than Justin Pugh is, but I think five over three. That'll be is, fifteen, right? Yeah. Um, that would put him in the J.C. Treader range. That I think that's fair. I think he's better than that, though. I think he'll get more than that. But with the injuries, he's, he he is younger, but I'm accounting injuries uh, in there. Yeah. And I don't want to sign him to too large of a deal. I'm pretty much banking on player loyalty at this point with that with that deal. Yeah, let me just double check see if Richburg actually resigned. I had I hadn't heard. I don't know. I had not heard if he had. Yeah, I'm just gonna see. Weston Richburg. No, it's IR. No, he hasn't resigned. Um. Okay, so with that injury history, I would up it. it we'll up it to 17 over seven. three. How about how about we all yeah seventeen over three okay um I'm gonna say thirty percent guaranteed of that so okay. I'm not sure exactly what not that would come much. out to I'd say that would be let's see seventeen over three eight and a half would be fifty so like six maybe six mil over in that range okay so Richburg you know what he might even sign a, a prove it deal honestly. Um, but I, I, what, I don't think he's at that point yet. No, nah, he might not be. All right. So three for 17, what we said. Yeah. Three for 17, six guaranteed. Okay. So let's see. What does that put us at? Uh, yeah, cap room rapidly declining. No, not, not, not too bad. Let me well, see. What is it? Uh, like what now? Like 25? That would be eight plus, uh, let's I, see. I, where I don't know where it started exactly. Five point, Thirty-one was what we started at, so we basically dedicated a, about thirteen mil. Um, I think we can extend that out a little bit so it's not so top heavy. So let's say we make that to about uh, ten mil over the first year for the two of them combined instead of thirteen. Prorated a little bit. Okay. Um, may, may, I'll, agree. Maybe, I'll maybe, agree to those terms. Maybe nine and a half will prorate a little bit. So we're at uh, twenty-two and a half right now. Yeah. Um, or 21 I mean, and a half. Yeah. Who else is really there? Um, so what's our biggest needs right now? Still offensive line. Okay. I think running uh, back, but you're not. Okay. So and anyone from the free agency, Casillas, Fluke, or Keenan Robinson. Um, Jonathan Casillas is a captain, uh, but I don't particularly want him back because I think he does serve a role, which is speed yeah. at the linebacker position, and he can cover – Decently, but do you want for almost three million? I personally million a year? do not want Jonathan Casillas to return. I okay. don't, don't okay. want it. Um, Linebacker, look in the secondary. Ross Mark Herslick is a good special teams guy. I feel like he's going to retire. Okay, how about Ross Cockrell? Cockrell played well. What would what kind of a deal would that have to be? I don't want to pay him above three per year. He he was at one point one in a kind of a prove it year. Um, yeah, but he played he played decently. Yeah, not not anything. Great, obviously, but it was, I, it was decent play, which is better than what he was doing in Pittsburgh. I don't think he's worth it, honestly. I, I mean, if you get him for one point one, I think that's fair. I, I don't think we're going to get him for that little. I think right. this was yeah. just the the final let, year to see what he could do. Let him walk then. Yeah. Um, outside of that, I mean, Devon Kennard. Devon Kennard is an exceptional player for for the Giants, and I exceptional. I'm I'm you know I'm. Icing yeah, the cake there. He's he's good and he should return. He's really the one bright spot on the entire linebacking core. Yeah. Um, and he's not. Gonna, I don't think he's going to be as expensive as you might think for his caliber of player. What would you say? Four mil a year. Uh, I'd go four and a half. Four and a half. Okay. So, uh, thirteen and a half over three. Yeah, it's fair. Okay. He's a former a sixth round pick, and he's he's played well. Yeah. He's a he's a versatile player. I can rush the passer and you know, drop back a little bit. Yeah. So th okay, so that that puts us at around mm, about seventeen mil. Mm. It's a it's a tight squeeze. It's a tight squeeze yeah. to say the least. Um, 
Especially considering you have to pay Odell this next year. Yeah, it's not going to be easy. But uh, hopefully they can get Eli off the books soon, which is the the big money. Ideal, yeah. Yeah, so uh, let's see. We have that. I don't think there's anybody else. I mean, Tavares King maybe on a, on a minimal deal. but he's, he's a guy that played well in his opportunities, but I wouldn't be willing to pay him over over, over like one and a half. No, nah, I think he's worth a mil. Okay, so we'll bring him back much. on a one on a on a futures contract two for uh, two for three. How about that? That's fair. That's okay. fair. King, two for three. So we're down to fifteen point five, roughly. Um. Okay. So looking at the roster now, we are still in a bad spot in terms yeah, of cap room is vicious. Yeah, corner and future contracts. Corner, yeah. I'm not a huge fan of right now. Jack uh, Rabbit's good. Janoris Jenkins, yeah. uh, D. Garcia. You worry about age, and then Eli Apple is not a decent yeah. starter. And considering how much nickel the Giants have played in the past because yeah. of their inability or their lack of players at linebacker, they've had to run that. But Eli Apple isn't a solid boundary corner, and D. R.C. was moved into the slot where he actually has played well. Yeah, but you have to you have to stick it out with DRC and Jack Rabbit, and I think draft a cornerback. But we'll yeah. get to that in a minute. Yeah, I think we're gonna have to take one in round two. Um, I I don't like the options because we don't have the money. So yeah, um, any free agent positions that we need to address immediately. Um, I think because you can't draft five linebackers, but you need linebacker depth. We brought back Devon Kennard, but. We're not bringing back Ray Ray Armstrong. The other options there are not great. B.J. Goodson is their starting middle linebacker. He's a former fourth-round pick that's played okay. Yeah. Um, I think you need to address linebacker, even if it's bringing in someone of of decent ability. It doesn't have to be anyone crazy. I'm not looking to pay over three and a half on the open market for anybody. Okay. Um I'm trying to remember. The Giants offered somebody a contract. Former Seahawk linebacker slash defensive end uh they gave him a two-year eight million dollar contract and he failed uh this physical eight don't, mil don't know off the top of my head i'm looking it um, up um i don't think there's anybody that really fits that bill unless you want to go we could offer navarro bowman a contract no no for that m little money mason foster maybe uh yeah I can, yeah I can give it Mason Foster a shot. I don't I'd think be it'll okay be with easy that. to get him, but because I think he's better than the one point two mil that he earned previously. Uh, I think for sure. Um, how about Demario Davis? He's a guy that's a little bit older now, but still not not that old, especially for a linebacker. He plays with speed. Uh, he's been solid for every team he's played for. I would yeah. be okay with that. What would you say? Maybe two, two mil. He, he's making one right now after the trade. Yeah, I would say. I would say two then. So two for four with uh, one point five guaranteed. Yes. Okay. You can do that. I'm trying to find this player. Might have been in twenty fourteen when it happened. Okay, so that puts us a little lower. We're at 13 and a half. I don't think we can really spend much more. Um, uh, this is a tough spot to be in. No, I know. Running back, we could address, but it's so deep. I don't think we need to. Not in free agency, I don't think, no. I think we need to look at a pass rusher for depth. That's, a, that's certainly a need. Move. Yeah. All right, um, who's, who's there is the big question. Aaron Lynch comes to mind. That would be a fantastic they, fit. They, I don't know why the Niners to use don't him. want him. Yeah. I'd yeah. say we offer Aaron Lynch a one-year prove-it deal at three mil. Yeah, that's a that's a steal, I think. I think he could get more, but I don't know if he will because team if they don't use him, especially with that team, I think that this could be a steal. I mean, this is only for one year. This is just to get us by right now. Mm -hmm. But he could be a guy that we could throw in um, into NASCAR packages, move Vernon inside, and try to rush with the 
with the group that we have. Um, one for three puts us at 10.5, and I think that's the max that we can go. Yeah, I, I would agree on that 100%. I'm trying. I, I hate to be kind of in and out here, but I'm trying to find this player's name. I know it's not relevant, but yeah. it's going to bother me, and I have to. It's okay. So. <laughs> hey, we're still here. We're figuring out. It's a group effort. Yeah. So let's see. Um, oh, Mason Foster did just resign, so it doesn't matter anyway. Oh, okay. He signed. Oh yeah. Wow. I seeing the picture Two years for four mil. Wow. I'm really surprised that he only signed for that much. But. Good for him. So now we have to get to the draft. Um, O'Brien Schofield, thank you, thank oh, you. Yeah. Yes, I, I couldn't find it. I remember his name was O something. I'm like, I was looking for it in the rosters. I was looking at Cardinals and Seahawks. I couldn't find it. I think I think I meant uh, Falcons instead of Cardinals. No, he was on the Cardinals. Yeah, Cardinals, Seahawks, Falcons. I knew all the teams. I couldn't figure out his name. Jeez. Appreciate that. That's pretty good. All right, so let's start things off with... Hmm. We have round one, pick number two. That's our start. This is, a, this is a weird spot for me, personally, because you have to look at the number one overall pick, because that's going to dictate the entire rest of the draft. Um, I think, based on everything that I've heard from Dave Gettleman, Pat Shermer, and you know John Mara, the owner of the Giants, they're looking to go with Eli for this year. But we're not them. And that's true. I'm, that's I'm, true. I'm, I, I'm, I know. I know. However, for a while now, I've been on the don't draft a quarterback train. Because, quite frankly, I'm not too high on any of the options. I get that Josh Rosen will be a good player. Um, I don't want him at the number two overall pick. It's not often that the Giants get up to number one, number two, number three, number four, number five overall. How often do the Giants pick in the top five? It's not often at all. You need to make these picks count. And if a player like Saquon Barkley's on the board uh, at we're number not, two— we're, we're, we're not taking him. He's a generational player. I don't care. There, this You're is an absolute su- cloud. Th- this is such a deep running back class. Uh, trade back then. Trade back. Well, <sighs> continuity. We can't. I'm not we, taking a quarterback. I will we, not agree we, to these terms. We have to. No, it, we it, don't. We have to. I not think, at two. I think at two. I think there's that's the only <laughs> option. Because think about this. We will not have the money. I'm so out on this. We will not have the money to sign somebody next year. Yeah, agree. We're going to have to re-sign Odell. We're going to have to re-sign Landon Collins. We're going to... Uh, I don't I don't want, like, an average to above average quarterback when you could find average later down the draft. There are, like, 28 quarterbacks in this draft that are going to go in the first five. Uh, I, don't, I don't want Josh Rosen. I, you know what? If we have to settle on Baker Mayfield, I'd be I'd be comfortable with that too. I mean, let's let's do it. Let's take uh, Mayfield. I'm I'm a big Mayfield believer. We'll go Baker Mayfield at two. I guess, think I think I that's the I want. I think that's the right move. We need. He's a quarterback. the best quarterback in the class. Yep. but he's not the best player in the draft. There's a generational yeah. player. His name is Saquon Barkley. But you know what? Name. It's 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 okay. It's okay. There are plenty of running backs who are good, and we have other needs. It really, the, the truth of the matter is that we could always take Geis, we could take Ronald, uh, Ronald Jones, Jones, we Tony could take Michelle, Sonny Michelle. Yep. Job. yep. We could Carry take Rashad Johnson. Penny. Rashad, eh, mm, no, no. No, I mean, that, that, that'll be, that'll be like a fourth rounder. Yeah. That, that'll, be, that'll be a later round guy. Yeah. But th- there are options. And, worst case scenario, we could always come back and sign LeGarrette Blunt in free agency week but all right yeah that's their potential uh that, we'll that, go that, we'll that's go a big. minimal sign okay so number two uh, saquon no <laughs> <laughs> oh that's rough I, I understand i understand your frustration but it really doesn't matter how good the running back is if we don't have a quarterback and we might we might not Eli's get another shot dream. we might not get another shot at a quarterback like this for a very long time that's fair that's fair so, i would be i would be I would be pleased if the Giants took Baker Mayfield on draft day. Yeah. Um, but 
I'm a big Saquon guy. And, and of course, we, we I, need I the money. We we need the money anyway for yeah, the quarterback. I I understand why, but it's like you know, it's bittersweet. Yeah. Uh, I understand. I'm agreeing to it clearly. So, but you know, yeah, I, I it, understand. Yeah, you have to, which you is know, unfortunate. It, 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 based on what we've done, you have to. I mean, we always want all the good players because there are so many good players. Yeah. It's just, it's just the way it is. So we kind of have to be. We have I'm to. I'm probably going to push Saquon Barkley at every single draft pick down the board for all these. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. Every single first. Like you know, he, he, he could fall. Yeah, you know, oh, the 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 Colts spent you know twenty million dollars on Le'Veon Bell and have Marlon Mack, Saquon Barkley, number one. <laughs> but uh, but let's funny. let's let's keep moving. So round two, round two, um, we this is where we have to start getting into the little bit of projection. So we need right tackle, left tackle. So we're just gonna we're gonna say offensive line. Yeah, defensive line. Uh. Yes. Not not a pressing, not a not a that, second. That's fair, round but uh, but edge rushers. Yes. For for Olivier Vernon and JPP, they played ninety percent of yeah. all defensive snaps for the Giants. You yeah. do need edge help. Oh, absolutely. Uh, um, so linebacker back. and secondary and running back. So a number of needs. Um, yeah. we need to be able to protect no matter who the quarterback is. Yeah, I I would agree with that. I, uh, I just what I'm thinking. Uh. For this at this juncture in the second round, top of the second round, you're looking for a franchise left tackle because you're looking to do something else with Eric Flowers. You're not yes. drafting for a right tackle. And I'm looking on the board, and you see maybe an Orlando Brown. He played right tackle, so pretty much crossed him off the list. I think Mike McGlinchey's going round one. Uh, you look at maybe a Colton Miller. Is this a bit of a reach when he could be there in round three? And there are other solid. Uh, offensive actually, lineman. actually, uh, Orlando Brown was a left tackle. He he played right tackle two years ago for sure. I know, but he, this year he was a left tackle. Okay, I. So, I mean, he's a he's a big, big mama jamma. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's pretty large. Um, he's six eight, three forty two. And he can I don't move. I don't want to draft another Jason Smith. No, but he can move at least. He's not a he's not a uh, King Dunlap. <laughs> I'm a, Jesus. <laughs> I'm going to say hold off on offensive line. As as pressing of a need as it is, I'm going to say hold off on offensive line based on who's there and who could be there. Okay. Um, and I'm going to say address a different position. Okay. And so <sighs> that's tough. Um, I'm not going to say running back. Yeah, I don't think it's running back. I think it has to be I'm corner. looking at linebacker or corner. Corner linebacker. Um, Rashawn Evans. Think he'll be here? I I don't I don't think so. I think he's gonna. Well, I mean, there's there's definitely potential for it. Um, it, there will be quite a few off ball linebackers to go, um, in the first round if he's not here. You know who I'd like to take here if available, um, oh. is Harold Landry, if he's here. He could be an interesting fit. I don't think he's an be he's here. an edge that I think has the athleticism to do more than just that. Yeah. Uh, so. Like what you've done with Devon Kennard, where he rushes the passer a decent amount on you know set blitzes, but yeah. also is a guy that can cover. I think Harold Landry, more of that edge rusher, primarily that yeah. can do a little, little bit more. And I know it's not the ideal fit, uh, but you think about what Vic Beasley does in Atlanta, where he is a defensive end that occasionally will play coverage, which they shouldn't be doing. Yeah. But I think the edge help that you need is such a big uh, thing. Yeah, especially when the pressure doesn't get to the quarterback, and with your secondary currently being a little bit beat up, you need pressure to help those guys out. Uh, you know, I think I'm gonna, it's more pressing than a corner. I'm going to put a name out here. Okay. Shaquem Griffin. Not not here, not here. I think he is a dynamic playmaker. He, he's he's a very good linebacker. I will give you that. Uh, I wouldn't spend a second rounder on him. Why not? Uh, <laughs> uh, 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 noises. Um, I. Uh, <laughs> it, 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 I, I, I understand. It's not an easy sell. I really think he he's is he phenomenal. is good. He's limited. He's At limited. What? Uh, I don't. 
there's a there's an elephant in the room. Um, yes, I understand. He has one hand. That's yeah. That's, I, that's, I, I th- that's that's eliminate. I, the easiest position for him to be able to play is linebacker, given his you know current situation. And I me laughing at this is awkward. Awkward laugh. Not laughing because I think it's yeah. funny. Is one hand. Let's just yeah. say that right off the bat. I think he isn't worth spending a second rounder when you don't know how that's going to translate. He wouldn't be a first round pick anyway. With two hands, in my opinion, he'd be yeah. around this place anyway. It like you know, middle of the second round. We're at the top of the second. He has one hand. You have to say it. He has one hand. Yeah. And you know that that limits you in terms of playmakers uh, forcing interceptions through the middle when you maybe need him to cover. And I know deflections, all right, but yeah. it limits you in terms of of big play opportunities. And I'm not willing to spend almost a first round pick, two picks out of the first round, on on that risk. I I understand. That's, that's, that's I, I wanted to pose it because he's so talented. He uh, now he is, and I agree. If we're in the third round, this is a different conversation. Then let's come back to linebacker. <laughs> that's okay. Okay. Let's go. Uh, let's go. Corner, we, we looked at we looked at edge there. Look, Harold Landry, you know, edge yeah. player. Lawrence Armstrong Jr. Edge player. Yeah. Uh, cornerbacks available here. You're looking at probably a Mike Hughes at another UCF guy, Dante Jackson out of LSU. Um, and that's that's probably the top guys on your board because I think Josh Jackson's going to be on. I think Denzel Ward's going to be on. If yeah. they're both not, one of those guys for sure. Especially uh, a guy like Denzel Ward. Yeah. Josh Jackson, big playmate. I mean, either one of those guys would be awesome. I would rather. I don't want to assume that any of those guys are going to be on the board. I think I think take an edge rusher here, and I know it doesn't seem like the most pressing need, and people, you know, Giants fans might be mad at me. I'm a Giants fan also. I, I realize their needs. You got to understand, uh, when you have the top edge rushers in the NFL playing about 70% of their snaps on the defense side of the ball at a very high number, that's high. That's top of the league in terms of percentage of defensive snaps plays. Played and then you have the Giants defensive end and JPP and Olivier Vernon that are playing ninety percent plus of their defensive snaps. Yep. You can't stay fresh. You can't generate the pressure. They need more edge rushers. They do. I would be comfortable taking a good one here. Um, a Dorrance Armstrong, a Harold Landry. I would be. I'd be more than comfortable. Can Can we agree on? I uh, depending on who's there, Harold Landry or Orlando Brown. Because I think yeah, we'll we'll say alternate. We'll give two options given the situation. I would be comfortable with that. Because I think Brown is going to be good, but if there's not a great option at edge, I think, I think that would probably be the right play. I think Harold Landry is a great option. No, I mean if he's gone, if he's gone. Yeah. Okay, that's fair. And then we'll we'll say Orlando Brown. I think Colton Miller is right in that conversation. Yeah. I I... think he's a little bit further down the board though. Just you know, if Seahawks take offensive line. And another team surprises takes offensive line, and another team does. I think offensive line is going to be in in demand because of the fact that it's just it, it's so expensive. It to always pay these is. guys now. No, I mean, but the the price tag has gone up so dramatically for below average players. Luke Jokel, eight million a year. You told me that's ridiculous. Yeah, that, that's He's not worth three and a half, in my opinion. Yeah. So let's go to third round. Third round. Um, I think Here you're looking at running back or. Tackle. Yeah, running back. Um, I'd say we go Ronald Jones. I was thinking Ronald Jones as well. Uh, I would also like to throw Carrion Johnson's name into the ring. I'm a big Carrion Johnson guy. Okay. Um, I think one of the two. Um, <sighs> Nick Chubb is going to be here. I don't want Nick Chubb. Why not? I don't think he's as good as the other players. Simple as. Okay. What about if Sonny Michelle's here? Uh, Ronald yeah, Jones or Sonny be, Michelle. That'd be very intriguing as well. I would lean towards Ronald Jones because of the type of running back that he is. And what I mean by that is a guy that's a little bit more physical. He's Melvin Gordon. Uh, he, he, let, yeah. let's, let's go to the chase. That, that's the style that he plays. That's fair. That's fair. Uh, I, prefer, I prefer one of those style of running backs. Karrion Johnson, the guy that's bigger than both of them. I think Sonny Michelle is uh, a one-cut style running back. I know he has some weight to him. He but could be more of a change of pace guy. Yeah, that's that's what I think he is, and I don't okay. want another one of those when you already have a Paul Perkins who isn't especially good. 
Yeah. Um, I, I would. I want a bell cow running back. And so, look, you have him there, Darius Geis, if he's available. He's not going to be. He's he's got he's gone long in the he he was going to be a first rounder probably, um, at the very well, worst know. early second. He he's he's too talented. Um, I think he's exceptionally talented. I just don't know other teams. Yet. Let, let's uh, let's put it this way: We'll take Ronald Jones if he's there. If not, we'll take a different running back of similar potential in our mind. And let's uh let's just go by position groups for the last few. Um, we have fourth rounder, fourth rounder. We have how many fourth rounders? Two fourth rounders. Um, I'd say here we would go uh, defensive back, corner. Yeah, I think I think you have corner, to corner or linebacker. If Shaquem Griffin's still here, I think it's a it's an easy pull in the fourth round. Um, but I think corners another very important. Option. I would go. I would go either Kevin Tolliver or Tavares McFadden if they're available. I think Tavares McFadden is a very big guy, frame wise. He's six two. I want to say. Um, I think he needs to definitely add some weight, but I mean not necessarily. He's a guy that's fast. Um, the big frame will help him. Those style of cornerbacks are awesome. Look, compares very favorably to DRC in a lot of ways. Not the speed necessarily. Yeah. Um, Let's hope his learning curve is better. And he's a guy that was maybe the top-rated cornerback um, in the NFL prior to this season. He dropped off a little bit, but that's also because other guys played well. And then yeah. Kevin Tolliver uh, is another guy that was supposed to be the best cornerback for LSU this past year. Had a, a decent season the previous year. And then uh, Dante Jackson kind of stole the, the show a little bit. But Kevin Tolliver's here. Maybe you take him. He's a guy that you know has potential. Got it done from an early point on in his college career. Same thing with Tavares McFadden. Uh, if you're taking a cornerback, I'd look at either of those. Shaquem Griffin, if he's available at this point in the fourth. Uh, I think Josie Jewell, even. I think we have... John Dion Hamilton's decent, too. I think we have a lot of options here. Yeah, um, there are almost too many to name. I'd say linebacker and defensive back would be our picks in the fourth round, the two picks. Yeah. Just and got then, some names. And then from it. there, um, you know, offensive line help. Um, maybe even, well, I'd be comfortable taking maybe, another one. Maybe even another wide receiver, depending on who's there. Um, yeah, because wide receiver is a weak point. If um, let me if, look at it. If, if, if Odell gets here. hurt, things get very dicey, especially because we cut Brandon Marshall. Yeah. Um, how about a guy like Deion Kane? Cedric Wilson out of Boise State's very good as well. Cedric Wilson, I would I would be in on Cedric Wilson if he's available right now, at a yeah. Boise State yeah. guy that's got decent wheels and he's tall. He's six foot three. Uh, maybe if a Javon Wims is here, you also look at him. Like I said, a lot of options. It, it's too yeah. hard to speculate at this point because because this is so deep into the draft, you don't really know how things are going to go. I'd say another guy to consider is Marcel Aitman. I, I have a feeling he might be a, a day three guy who. He, he's someone I like. I've seen uh, him body people, which yeah, he is so yeah. he is. I like physicality. I like him. He he profiles to a not maybe not an X, but a very good Z. Um, you know, he's a huge guy, six four, six five. Um, definitely, I would like yeah, I'd like him as well. He's he's very very talented. If I think he, I I don't know he, if it was you who retweeted something about him. Yeah, it was um, me. <laughs> I saw a play. Yeah. Where he just destroyed a cornerback. Oh yeah, very very good player. Yeah, uh, and I looked further into him, of course, because you know he's just a little bit overshadowed. Yeah, by uh, I mean, James Washington. It's also the fact that he plays in an air raid. The route running isn't crisp, but he could have a very that you don't expect it to be with someone of his size as yeah. such a young player. You you could you could have an Anquan Boldian type player with his. How would you just say his last name? I said Anquan Boldian. Uh, what is that? Being like him, Bolden. Yes, what's An- wrong with you? Uh, sorry, an Anquan Bolden like player. <laughs> thinking of Bernard uh, Berrien? No, I, I was thinking. Two names? I, I was thinking of poor English. That's what I was thinking of. <laughs> I don't mean to like you know like throw yeah. you under the bus there, but that was that was vicious, and I'm yeah. trying to save you. No, it, it was it was terrible. It was terrible. Yeah. Um, I I don't know what I was trying to go. With. <laughs> 
And then, and then you, you doubled down on it, which I respect. I respect yeah. the double down. Well, it, it took me a minute to realize yeah. that. Boldian, probably... you idiot, Bangu. <laughs> yes. Well, Are I know. I, I know what his last name is. I was trying to. I'd hope so. One of the best receivers we've seen you, over. You the know, past. like a a Carolinian. You know, when when you talk about a New Yorkian, or you, that would be a New Yorker. You know, things like that. A, Calif- We're a Californian. On. A Californian. A Californian. That, that, that's what I was going with. Californians. Ah. Yes, that's what I was going with. The, the Boldian. That, that was the yeah. idea. But okay. Let, let, let's just let's wrap saying, it up. Dude. Let's wrap it up. <laughs> I, I'm just digging myself a ditch here. I'm just going to slowly slink off screen. Um, but I think that's about it. Yeah. So we come in with about 10 and a half mil in cap space um, after all of this. Plus, We'd like we get... more, but more is going to be freed up next year. Yeah, and I mean, we could always go and try to bolster the roster in a few different places, uh, revisiting after the draft. But I think for now, we're pretty good as of this moment. Um, obviously, we don't love how things have shaped up because we still have some holes, but we were limited. And I think we did the best to address long term a little bit more than short term because this is a team that, in all honesty, probably needs to rebuild a little bit before they can get anywhere especially with the O-line slash quarterback situation at the moment. Mm-hmm. Um, so, all said and done, we bring back Justin Pugh. Four years, $32 million, 15.5 guaranteed. We bring back Weston Richburg on a cheaper deal, three for 17, six mil guaranteed. Um, we bring back Kennard, three for 13.5. Tavares King, two for three. Demario Davis, we add on two for four. Aaron Lynch, one for three being that he really didn't get a ton of uh, playing time in San Francisco. He might be a steal. In the draft, we take Baker Mayfield at number two, despite Bangle, despite Bangle being adamantly in favor of Saquon Barkley instead. Um, I, understand, I understand why it had to happen, yeah, which yeah. maybe is why it hurts the most. Yeah, it's, it's always the logical ones that hurt. Um, yeah. At number 34, we're either going to go Harold Landry or Orlando Brown, offensive tackle, out of Oklahoma. At number 66, we're looking at Ronald Jones or a running back equivalent. At In the fourth round, we're looking at defensive back slash linebacker at the two spots. And fifth round and later, we're going to look at wide receiver, maybe a Marcel Aitman, someone who could be a big, bigger body guy who could kind of plug and play a little bit. Uh, maybe a developmental type wide receiver to put alongside Odell Beckham, King, Shepard, etc. Um, also, we're going to look at some more offensive line depth, some more defensive line depth, linebacker depth, etc. And that's going to pretty much wrap things up. Uh, what would you say our record would be with Eli this year? I, I don't feel as confident as I did about the Browns being. Oh, the Browns were so good. I know. The team we, was amazing. We, we really made them a big turnaround i feel like this is a team that if eight. everyone's clicking i think they they have the potential to be a playoff team obviously i but I, I think with the eli regression and the offensive line inconsistencies i'd be a little bit less likely to say that they could yeah. make the playoffs i'd say seven to nine wins is probably the market yeah, I, if i, I had to pick right i'd on. go i'd go eight and eight yeah um but i mean this is a team that you know you, we're preparing for the future this isn't about this year and to set these guys up for success, we had to make some sacrifices along the way, um, obviously. But Baker Mayfield is the future for this team, and not having to deal with Eli's salary after next season is going to be a godsend for this team. So uh, let me see exactly what it would be to cut him following this season. It would be, oh, beautiful, 17 mil in cap savings, only six in dead cap. I think that's gonna be that's gonna be it for him. Um, Ed so, Oliver, first round next year, book it. And that's really the only uh, player. I guess Dwayne Harris we could cut. John Jerry too. Both of them uh, in the following year. But as of right now, that's what it looks like for us. I hope you guys enjoyed. Bangle is hiding behind his microphone in shame that we couldn't get his team to be a playoff contender again. But in the future, Baker Mayfield will lead them in a way that Saquon Barkley couldn't. So I hope you guys enjoyed. For the Cover 2 Podcast, episode number 10, I'm Moonlight Swami for Bengal the Giant Bengal fan. I'll be talking to you guys later. Peace.